Hi all, thank you for joining my channel today. Now recently the Flat Earth community has been trying to cast shade on a lack of scientific evidence of the R value. Now it seems that this phrase comes from a live broadcast from Jaronism with Nathan Oakley. My first response was, well, what the fuck is the R value? Now googling the phrase R value gives you some shit about home insulation or something. What does that have to do with the shape of the Earth? But then it turns out that they were actually talking about the radius of the Earth. In the video they make some silly claims, but the bottom line is that they claim that all of our mathematics presupposes that the Earth is a sphere, and that's why the results we get are that the Earth is a sphere. They also make the claim that there's no evidence for this magic R value. Now, there is plenty of evidence that the Earth is a sphere, and there's plenty of measurements of the radius. But, as flat earthers don't believe in evidence that scientists produce, I will propose an experiment that anyone can perform themselves. Essentially, what I will describe is a modification of the experiment performed by Eratosthenes, who calculated the circumference of the Earth with a high degree of accuracy. We can easily repeat this experiment. Now, for all you flat earthers out there, I know what you're thinking. You think that I'm proposing an experiment that presupposes a round Earth to prove that the Earth is round. Well, no. What I'm actually showing is that if the Earth is round, then what is the radius? Now, we will actually extend the experiment as well to determine the shape of the Earth. Now I will start with the experiment as performed by Eratosthenes to measure the radius of the Earth and then expand on it, but first let's have a quick look at some basic maths. So we take a circle and we draw two lines from the center to two points on the perimeter. These lines enclose some angle theta. The length of these lines is r, which is equal to the radius. The length of the arc between the points where the straight lines intersect is the product of theta and r. Now next is some basic trigonometry. We won't go into all the details, but just use the bits that will be required for the experiment. So let's draw a right angled triangle with height h and base length l. There are two unknown angles. The angle alpha can be found by taking the inverse tan of the length over height, and beta can be found with the inverse tan of height over length. Now alpha and beta will add up to 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So what we do is as follows. For the measurements, we stick a rod in the ground at 90 degree angle from the Earth and we measure the height h. When the Sun is exactly due south, we measure the length l of the shadow. Now it is important that the measurement is taken when the Sun is due south, as this makes the maths as simple as I've shown in the previous slide. Now you want to record the coordinates and record the time as well. It would be really cool if you had a buddy who did the same measurement at the same time but a few hundred kilometers due north or south, but if you trust suncalc.net then you could just pull the solar elevation angle for the equator at the same time and at the same longitude. If you are working with a group of people independently measuring, I would recommend that you do it on the same line of longitude as the maths is easier. You could pick arbitrary points, but make sure that you then do the measurements when the sun is directly south for each point. Now the analysis is simple. You can calculate the angle alpha for all the measurements and the difference in alpha is then your angular separation. Note that if you use suncalc.net, alpha is 90 minus the solar inclination. You then take a trusted distance calculator and get the distance between the two points. You divide the distance by the angular separation to get the Earth's radius. Now note that if the two measurements were taken at different longitudes, then you need to set the longitude component of the coordinates to be equal or just set them to zero. The time difference already accounts for this longitudinal component. So for example, if you take a measurement in New York and a measurement in LA, you are only interested in the lateral separation. Now we have found a radius, but this measurement hinges on the Earth being a sphere. We can extend the experiment to determine whether this assumption is true by adding measurements and calculate the solar inclination over the angle beta. We then plot the angle beta against lateral distance from some reference measurement. If the Earth is flat, beta will take the form of the inverse tan of h over d, where h is now the height of the Sun and d is equal to zero where the Sun is directly overhead. You will need to multiply this by 180 over pi if you're working in degrees. Now you can take an accepted value for h from the flat Earth community or you can use it as a fitting parameter if you know how to code. Now if the Earth is spherical, beta takes the form of pi over 2 minus d over r if you're working in radians, or 90 minus d over r multiplied by 180 over pi if you're working in degrees. 
Now, r is the radius of the Earth, but if you know how to code, you can just treat this as an arbitrary fitting parameter. I've plotted these functions for the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. The blue line is the result you would expect from a flat Earth model, and the orange line is what you would expect from a round Earth. So what I've outlined is a simple experiment to measure the radius of the Earth. I've then outlined an extension to that experiment which allows you to test the shape of the Earth. My challenge to globe believers and flat earthers is simple. If you are so high and mighty about empiricism, put your money where your mouth is and team up with some people you know to perform this experiment. Or get in touch via the comments and we'll get as many people involved as possible to gather data. I will then run the models on a live broadcast for transparency. And if it shows that the Earth is flat, I know peer-reviewed scientific journals which will accept it for publication. So with that, happy experimenting, and I look forward to the results.